Hello my friends, welcome to my review of the Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales collection by Lorac. I have so much information to share with you about not only the eyeshadow palette, but the cheek palette and one of the lip glosses. So stay tuned for all of the pirate goodness coming up right now. So as you may know, Disney collaborated with Lorac on this makeup collection, and I was fortunate enough to be able to purchase these three products in the collection, thanks to the wonderful ladies over in the super chat. So I want to, so every once in a while I get a gentleman, but mostly it's ladies over there. So ladies, thank you so much for your donation that enabled me to buy these products. If you've never been to one of my review videos before, they're very, very long. Think of them as like a nonfiction book that you don't necessarily have to read every single chapter. So I will be putting timestamps down below if there's certain things that you'd rather see and there's certain sections that you want to skip if you find yourself kind of spacing out during one part or another just skip to the next section I'm sure there's something great in there for you so where we're gonna start is information about Lorac as a brand so Lorac says that they are a cruelty free company they're very passionate about that there is a reputable blog called cruelty free kitty and they did a little bit of digging and found out that Lorac cannot guarantee the suppliers of their suppliers or the raw materials of the products, they cannot guarantee that those are cruelty free. So depending on your level of cruelty free, you may say Lorac is cruelty free or is not cruelty free. These products are paraben free. They are not vegan. However, every single one of these products in one way or another says that it may or may not include carmine, which is made from crushed beetles. It is a red pigment. So some of the shadows and blushes may have it. Some of them may not. Some of the lip products may have it. Some may not. The only way to find out which ones have it is to contact Lorac directly because it just says may or may not on the ingredient deck. It doesn't specify which products. Going along with the whole cruelty-free thing, the product is assembled in the United States, but it is made up of ingredients from both U.S. and non-U.S. sources. It's the non-U.S. sources that I guess that they can't guarantee that the suppliers of the suppliers are cruelty-free. So now let's go ahead and talk about price and value. So with the eyeshadow palette, you're paying $52 for this. The blush palette is $30 and the lip products are $26 each. You do get two lip products in here. You get a lipstick and a lip gloss. They are not full size, but they're not too terribly far from full size. You can currently purchase these items at Ulta, Lorac's website, Kohl's, and HSN. A little extra bonus for HSN, they do offer it in four payments. They also have free shipping, and they also offer the lip products in duos that'll save you about 10 bucks if you were going to buy two of the lip products versus buying them together. The eyeshadow palette, and you, when you open it up, you see that it's got this cardboard packaging. It's got a very nice mirror here. It's also got a little door here. And every time I've watched a review of this, I'm like crossing my fingers, please figure it out. Please figure out what the door is for. And like 75% of the time, they have no idea what the door is for. The little door is to put the blush palette in. So what you can do is go like this and put it in. And I have to admit, when I first unboxed this on the channel, people had to tell me what the door is for. So I don't fault anybody for not knowing, but that is what the little door is for, is to hold the blush palette. But you do have to uh, buy the blush palette palette separately. So if you don't buy the blush palette, I don't know what you would use the door for, but I think it's super cute. You also get a little eyeliner that I really want to tell you something about, but we're going to hold off on that until we get to a gradient analysis. It comes with 18 shadows. They are 0.7 grams each. It's really nice to have an eyeshadow that's at least one gram. These are small size shadows. Lorac always tends to make small size shadows when they're the square pan. Anastasia makes a similar size pan in their palettes, but most palettes do have larger pans. You are getting 18 shades in here. So it's 12.6 grams total equaling to $4.13 per gram of product, which is relatively expensive for this kind of price range when we're talking about comparing it to Too Faced and Urban Decay and Anastasia and, you know, brands like that. Anastasia is more expensive than this per gram, but it, it, this is more expensive than the Urban Decays and the Too Faced and things like that. It's not the best bang for your buck as far as the amount of product that you get. Compared to other Lorac products, the Lorac Pro palette is $5 per gram, the unzipped gold is $3.75 per gram, and the California Dreaming palette is only $3.09 per gram, which is inching toward urban decay territory. So in the in the Lorac world, this is not a fabulous value, but it's not the most expensive product per gram that they sell. Now let's talk about the blush palette in contrast. This is a fantastic deal for price per gram. It's a $30 palette. You get 15.42 grams of product 
product that equals out to $1.95 per gram of product, which is really inexpensive. In comparison with that, the Sephora Contour Blush Palette is $6.49 per gram. The Urban Decay Jean-Michel Basquiat, hopefully I said that right, my French is awful, $8 per gram. And the Becca and Chrissy Teigen Palette, which is also really popular right now, that's $3.07 per gram. So this is a fabulous value for your money. You do get six shades. These four here have shimmer in them. None of them have glitter in them. And these two shades here are matte. The lip product. Okay, when I first saw the price point on this at $26, I thought that was outrageous. <laughs> I looked at it and I was like, like that's insane but I saw the iridescence in here and it's like well you know I mean there really doesn't look like there's a lot of lipstick in here when you think about you know a t traditional size lipstick it doesn't seem like an awful lot of product they don't separate out the ounces per product they just do for the entire thing so this here is 0.18 ounces which equals $144 per ounce of product of either or together the Alter Ego Matte Lipsticks by themselves are $18 for 0.12 ounces. That's $150 per ounce. And then the Alter Ego Lip Glosses are $17 for 0.13 ounces, and that's $131 per ounce. So when you even them out, it ends up being kind of in the middle. So are you being ripped off for La Roque standards? No, you're not being ripped off. It's about the right price considering the price of their other lip products. So I compared it also to some other lip products on the market. For example, the MAC lipsticks are $170 an ounce and the Bite Beauty Amuse Bouche lipsticks are $173 per ounce. So those are for the lipsticks, so this is less expensive. Uh, when you look at lip glosses, the Buxom Full On Lip Creams are $142 an ounce and then the Anastasia Beverly Hills lip glosses are only $100 an ounce. So that's actually a really, really good deal in comparison with all of the other things. So again, it's kind of middle of the road as far as value goes. I I got a very enthusiastic request to move the ingredient analysis down further into my videos. So right now, instead of doing ingredient analysis, we're going to go ahead and do swatches and demos. So here comes the swatches right now. Welcome to the swatches of the Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales palette. So we're going to start with Ghostly, Starry Night, Compass, and R. So the first one I want to, oh, sorry about the out of focus. It'll come right back. Starry Night is the first one I want to tell you about. It definitely needs a little bit of building on the lids, but I find that it blends nicely into the other shadows, and I do really like this shade a lot if you're willing to kind of build it up and kind of go back and forth. Ghostly, I feel like, doesn't swatch here as nicely as it does on the lids, but it's definitely not the most opaque white I've ever seen. Also, the same thing with Compass. I feel like Compass is much more beautiful on the lid than it is here in the swatch. Watch. It might be due to my skin tone. And ARG is just okay for me. It's definitely not my favorite shade. It's relatively ordinary on the skin. Now this is the wipe test. The purpose of this is to show what happens when you overblend the shadows and what may happen over time. And as you can see, Starry Night and Arg are the ones that hang on the longest. Going into the second set of four, we have Black Pearl, Yo-Ho-Ho, -Ho, Bones, and Silver Mist. So with Black Pearl, Black Pearl is one of those duochrome shift shades. It's kind of a teal and warm brown shade. It's really fun. I really like shades like this. Yo-Ho-Ho -Ho and Bones are just kind of okay in the swatch. Bones is a nice transition shade for my skin tone or lighter. It probably won't work very well on other skin tones. Silver Mist is a gorgeous shade. I really, really like it. So my favorite ones here are Black Pearl and Silver Mist. The other ones are just kind of okay for me. And with the wipe test, you can see that Black Pearl definitely hangs on the longest. The rest of them kind of wipe away. Now moving on to Treasure, Tell No Tales, Shiver Me, and Curse. Treasure is definitely my favorite out of these four, but Tell No Tales is also a really wonderful matte shade. So Treasure, you can see that swatches beautifully, as does Tell No Tales. Uh, Shiver Me is kind of weak, but Cursed is really interesting. Do you see how the sparkles still hang on, even in the brush swatch? A lot of times in a brush swatch, the sparkles will just be completely gone, but they definitely hang on here. I find when you blend them out on the eye, they don't hang out, but if you pack it on the lid, they will. And with the wipe test, they all hang out except for Shiver Me. 
Now down to Matey, Lost at Sea, Pirate's Chest, and Sea Haze, or Matty. Matty. I do really like Matey or Matty. It's a very nice matte white. I like it better than Ghostly. I also really like Lost at Sea and Pirate's Chest and Sea Haze. This is actually a really nice trio of lighter shades. They just work really well. Lost at Sea is probably the weakest out of these four, but Sea Haze is just gorgeous. I love the shade. I'm very much attracted to shades like this. I just think it's absolutely beautiful. It reminds me of a mermaid. You can see that yellow green shift there. It's just really beautiful. And the white test. Uh, you can see that Pirate's Chest and Sea Haze are the only ones that hang around, but that's pretty good for lighter shades. Menace and Silent Mary are our last ones. Menace is like a deep green gray, and that one is a really nice matte shade. A little bit patchy there on the swatch, but it's not so bad. And Silent Mary I really like a lot as well. I don't feel like it looks as good on the lid though as it does in the swatch here, uh, but it is still a really nice shade. Great shade to use to balance out some of these brighter colors. And with the white test you can see that both of them last pretty stinking well now moving on to the blush palette as you can see you've got your three highlights on the left and your three blushes on the right so going with the highlights first I just really love these shades so much so much. The only one I'm not really digging is Fortune because it's just too light, but they pick up beautifully on the brush. They do kick up a ton of powder though, a lot of powder, but the shine is really, really beautiful if you like those really poppy from space highlighters. These are not subtle highlighters at all. If you're really, if you really love like the Becca highlights, you will probably really, really like these. Going down to the bottom, you've kind of got a blush highlight mix here with Bold Spirit, but it's really, really gorgeous. You can use it kind of as a blush topper, especially if you're a deeper skin tone. You'll probably need it a blush underneath it to make it pop, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And Caribbean is a beautiful, beautiful shade. Lasting Power is fantastic. And Lost Boy is also a really nice shade for lighter skin tones. I hope you found the swatches helpful. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you a demo of how I got this look today. One thing I want to tell you about the demo before you watch is I will not be using the eyeliner and there's a good reason for that, but I'll save that for ingredient analysis. So go ahead and check out the demo now and I will see you in just a minute.
So now it is time for my favorite part because I am such a geek for ingredient analysis. This is just a reminder that I am not a makeup artist and I am not a cosmetic chemist. I am a makeup enthusiast and I am a makeup geek, self-proclaimed. I love looking up ingredients and learning information and every time I look up information about ingredients, I learn more and more. I also learn a lot from you in the comments, those of you that leave comments about the ingredients and I love learning from you. So just keep that in mind as you watch the demo and also the ingredient analysis. So let's go ahead and talk about the eyeshadow palette, some things that you need to know. Mica and talc are both in here. Uh, some people like one or the other, or some people don't like one more than the other. So just so you know, it has both. Mica is further up on the ingredient list than talc. It also has ethyl palmitate. Uh, some people don't like palm oil and palm oil derived products. So that's something that's in here. Mineral oil, I personally don't have a problem with, but some people do. So that is in here as well. Also ethyl palmitate does have an allergen uh, concern on there for people that are allergic to it. So there you go. Propylene glycol also has an allergen concern on it. It also says that it may or may not contain a bunch of pigments like ferric ferrocyanide that are not lip safe. So I would not use any of these shadows on your lips. Some people ask me, why would I put it on my lips? Well, some powder products look very nice on the lips. You can take like one of these shimmery shades and add a little bit of shimmer to your lips, but I do not recommend you do that with this palette just because it's not lip safe. Like I mentioned when I talked about this not being vegan, it does have carmine in some of these shadows. So just so you know, that is in here for those of you that do not like crushed beetles in your eyeshadows. Some really interesting ingredients that I found that I never noticed before when I looked at the rock eyeshadows that it actually has a lot of skin conditioning extracts in there. And I'd read about that in Lorac's About page, which I thought was really cool. So for example, cucumber extract, parsley extract, marshmallow root extract, which is very interesting to look up if you want to read about marshmallow root. I don't know. I found it fascinating. Cornflower extract. I'm a geek. I can't help it. English marigold flower extract and then lemon peel extract. So all of them except for the lemon peel extract are claimed to be skin conditioning. I don't know how skin conditioning something can be in a powder form, but just so you know, that's a thing. The lemon peel extract, I'm not quite sure why that's in there. I didn't see any reason why it would be in a cosmetic product, but Paula's Choice does say that it is skin sensitizing, so that's not necessarily a good thing. But Live Strong has a list of the benefits of lemon peel extract, so I don't know what to believe on that one. I'll leave links down below so you can make your own decision. All of the ingredients that I talked about in the eyeshadow palette are also in the blush palette, but also in addition to that, there's something called retinal palmitate, which is a form of vitamin A. There's some evidence that it increases sun sensitivity. I'm not sure how much it would in a blush palette, but just so you know, I'm just letting you know it's in there and it does seem to be lip safe. I forgot to mention the highlighter. This is the Lorac Front of the Line Pro Pencil and it is in the black shade. Now, it does have cyclopentasiloxane. If you wanna decrease your environmental footprint, you can wipe this off instead of washing it off and letting it go into the sink. It has been shown to be bioaccumulative in sea life. So just so you know, that's a thing. Everything looks good till you get to the black pigment and that's called CI77266. I looked on environmentalworkinggroup.org. They can be kind of, um, how do I say this in a nice way? They can really kind of alarm people for no reason sometimes it seems because the more I dig into research about different products, I find that all the sources will say, well, Environmental Working Group says this, but when you really look at the research, it really only had to do with this specific circumstance and that doesn't really happen in the natural environment, so it's not that big of a deal. You know what I'm saying? So it seems like the concerns are almost overinflated on environmental working groups. So it's a great place for me to start ingredient analysis, but it's never where I stop my ingredient analysis. So keep that in mind as I tell you this. Environmentalworkinggroup.org says that it is a violation of government restrictions to use that product on cosmetics that are by the eyes. In Canada, they say it is expected to be toxic or harmful or because of organ system toxicity, non-reproductive type. Immediately after I found that, right before I filmed this video, because I just did the ingredient analysis this morning, I emailed Lorac to find out what they had to say about it. I also looked on Sephora to see if I could find that ingredient in any other products, and I did find it. I found it in the Urban Decay 24-7 eyeliner in Perversion. I also found it in the Marc Jacobs pen liner. So, 
Obviously, somebody seems to say this is okay because now I found three brands that use this pigment. So this may be a cause for alarm. It may not be a cause for alarm. I don't know. I'm personally not going to use this because of that uh, until I hear from Lorac or I find some other source telling me that this product is okay. It's just not worth it to me. Any update I get from Lorac about the eyeliner, I'll put in the description below. For the lip product, nothing too alarming, just a couple of allergen concerns in the lipstick, ethahexyl palmitate, tocopherol acetate, and phenoxyethanol, and then in the lip gloss, the phenoxyethanol. Those are just all allergen concerns. So if you're sensitive to any of those ingredients, you wanna skip this. So now let's go into my full review of the product, starting with the eyeshadow palette. So I don't think this eyeshadow palette is going to be for everyone. If you are a beginner at makeup and you're not quite sure how to put colors together, I definitely wouldn't recommend recommend this just because it's not an intuitive setup. There's there's no real guide for how to set how to put on your look. For example, the Lorac Pro palette, the Tarte Pro palette, those are set up so that you know they go from light to dark. It's just a lot easier to figure out what to do with what. This one I feel like it's kind of all over the place in the color selection. So I don't know if that would be best for beginners, but if you are used to using eyeshadow and you're used to playing with colors, then you will probably be just fine with this. I personally don't have too much of a trouble figuring out what I want to do with it, but I do have to put some thought into it. Um, I have found though that these shades go really well together. There really aren't any shades that I feel like don't go well together that I can't pull off a look with, you know? Like today I use these two shades here, but I could have easily done the green and the bright blue or the blue and the gold or the red and the gold. And you've got all these other shades in here that you can kind of mix with it to kind of uh, either deepen up the look, lighten up the look. You do have a very nice, blue brown shade in this black pearl. Uh, it's more of like a teal brown, which I really, really like those shades. I also really like Compass. This gold here is beautiful. Starry Night is gorgeous. My favorite shade in here is Sea Haze, just because I don't own anything like it. I think this was a great way for Lorac to break away from their typical neutral looking eyeshadow palette. I do wish it was set up a little bit easier, but I really like the color selection. I think that it's fun. I love that there's a mix of tone in here. There's some light shades in here. There's some mid-tone shades. There's some deep shades. So I feel like this would work for anybody of any skin tone that felt comfortable with these kinds of colors. Uh, it, are you going to be able to pull off a completely neutral look? Probably, but there isn't a lot of versatility for a neutral look in this palette. Overall, I really, really enjoy the quality. The quality is amazing. The lasting power on the shadows with a primer is fantastic. Without a primer, it seems to fade a little bit faster, but with a primer, it's amazing. I haven't used these wet yet, but supposedly you can use them wet, which is very exciting. It's just a really fun palette to play with. So I personally really love it and I definitely recommend it. If you've watched any reviews of the blush palette, they've all been positive, at least the ones that I've seen and my review is going to be no different. This is a phenomenal blush palette. Like I talked about in the value section, this is a great deal at less than $2 per gram of product. The color selection is beautiful. If you have a very deep skin tone, there may be a couple of shades that you're kind of like, eh, I don't really know what to do with these, but but I really think that this is going to show up on a deeper skin tone. The pigmentation can really be built up to being very, very bright. So I think you're really going to be able to use this. I'm not sure about this one over here, whether you'd be able to use this with a very deep skin tone. Uh, but I do feel like people with very fair skin tones are going to be able to rock everything here. You're just going to have to have a really light hand with this blush if you are of a very light skin tone. I love this shade right here. It kind of reminds me of some Becca products in that it's got that shimmer and shine to it but it's not like super bold and poppy. I've used this multiple times as just a blush, but you can also use this as kind of a blush topper, kind of like a colored highlighter kind of situation. It's really beautiful. These highlights as well are very, very beautiful. I don't particularly like the white as much on me because I feel like it kind of glows white. It's just a little too white. <laughs> if you're very fair, you probably will be able to get away with that easier than I can. But remember, you can also use these for eyeshadows as well. So. Don't feel like you're limited to using these as just blushes. These are make beautiful, beautiful eyeshadows as well. So this is definitely a huge recommend. This is my favorite thing in the collection and one of my favorite things that I have bought in a very long time. I can't stop using this. I love it. Now the lip product. I got the shade Sparrow and I'll show you the picture 
that's on the website. This is what I thought I was getting. But if you look very, very closely at the bottom, underneath that picture, there is a picture of the swatch. And you can see the swatch is totally different from the lipstick that they show. And the lipstick is actually much closer to the swatch. This lipstick, I feel, is a little gray. Uh, I feel like I can kind of pull it off with this look, but it's really not my favorite shade. I wish it was closer to the lipstick color that they showed in the picture rather than it being so gray. I was expecting more of a warm tone and this is very, very cool. I do like the lipstick with the lip gloss over top of it, but I don't think I'll be wearing the lipstick all by itself. I do, however, really like the lip gloss by itself. I am really enjoying it. I think it's absolutely beautiful. You saw in the application process the lip gloss by itself and I really like it and I've tried it over a few different lipsticks. It's very fun to play with and I really, really enjoy it. Is it worth the money? I don't know. I guess it just depends on what you feel like you want to spend on a lip product. It's kind of like if somebody says, oh, I'm going to charge you $30 for this bowl of ice cream. Or it, no matter what is in that ice cream, are you going to buy a $30 bowl of ice cream? Some people may. If it's got good enough ingredients in it, some people might buy a $30 bowl of ice cream. Me personally, I'm going to sit there and be like, no, it's just ice cream. I'm not paying $30 for it. That's kind of the way I feel about expensive lip products. It's just any anytime it goes over $20, $22, I start going, but everyone has their own threshold of what's expensive to them. If this looks like something you may enjoy and that $26 doesn't make you go, then you might want to try them. Uh, I only tried this one just because of the price point, uh, but I am really enjoying it. The lip gloss is not sticky at all. The lipstick is very creamy, very hydrating, goes on very nicely, and I enjoy the products overall. I The only complaint is, is the shade on Sparrow on the lipstick, but other than that, I'm really really liking it a lot. I don't think I'm going to buy any more. But if I found these lip glosses by themselves with the with the iridescence in them, I might buy more of those. That would be something I would consider. So that is my complete review of the Lorac Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man Tell No Tales collection. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, definitely make sure that you hit the subscribe button for more videos in the future, more review videos coming up soon. If you've tried this collection, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. And definitely read the comments below. Interact with each other. Talk in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness so we can all learn from each other and our own experiences and maybe your experiences is different than mine and that's perfectly fine I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below so I want to thank you so much for watching mad love and I will see you in a video soon bye all right this is a test testing 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 mm -mm -mm. Arr. Arr, matey.